Friday. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Drive Safe Dave here, and along with Sir Rick, he's uh, here with us. A little bit of remote action going in his uh, brand new shirt. Good things happen. I have to get out of the office to create success and, and sometimes drive safe, Dave. I can't sit in there with you. I've got to go out and knock on doors. i got to go spread the word on safety, drive safe, Dave. I'm good with it. In fact, if the more you get out and get success going away from the office, the more success drive safe Dave's going to have each and every day. But it's good to have you here, Sir Rick. Just saying, you know, good to have you here. the Great Commission, drive safe, Dave. Go on to all the world and spread the word of safety. I'm just doing the word. That's all I'm doing. And, and, and by the way, we're not just here for each other today. We're here to bring one more into the group. And that's Derek Williams, uh, founder of the Trucking Entrepreneurs Podcast. Derek, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing excellent. How are you all? I uh, man, we're doing great. Here we are the day. Here we are right after the 4th of July celebration of this country we are here celebrating another another year what you got going over there sir rick oh you put a hat on look at this guy um i'll tell you what we're celebrating another did you enjoy your fourth of july holiday as we have just as it has just occurred yes sir yes sir i sure had, uh, did um wonderful you know my wife she cooked out on the grill and that's not my thing i can do you know, yard work, housework, but the cooking aspect, I leave that all to the wife and uh, enjoyed myself. My parents came over and um, for a little short while and we had a very good time. Yeah, well, I got you on that one, uh, Derek. My wife cooks and does the lawn and does the laundry. So, you know, wow. I, I got you. <laughs> I, I just know a guy. That's all. I just know a guy. I don't. I, I just know I have a. I have a lawn guy. I have, but my wife does all the cooking. I like her cooking. So, oh, okay, excellent, uh, excellent. All right. Yeah. So, Derek, catch us up on what we've missed since the last time you were on the show. Fill us kind of in on what's trying. I, you got a new microphone. Um, <laughs> and, and what else? Have, what else has been going on with you? Well, uh, well, first, before going too far, I'd like to say thank you again for having me on your show. Um, I really do appreciate it. And all um, it's definitely an honor uh, to be on your show a second time. Um, but to answer your question, uh, I've been extremely busy uh, since the last time I was on your show. Um, with that is to the point where I've actually had to reach out to get some help to help with um, or delegate a couple of tasks to someone else to help out with it, to keep me from getting uh, worn out. So, um, you know, which is a good thing. It's, it's not a complaint at all. And um, so I'm thankful for the growth, thankful for being busy. Uh, also, today, as of today, marked my 28th episode. I dropped that um, this morning uh, with a guest uh, by the name of Sandra Covington. She's uh, the author of The Truck Driver's Wife Holding Down the Home Front. That's the name of her book. What an interesting, so what an interesting topic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And um, it's a very moving um, interview. Um, and it's a very, very uh, touching story. You know, they went, her and her husband went through a whole lot from the beginning to get to where they are right now. So it's a very good interview for sure. You know, you talk about that and, and, and as you get to interview these great and interesting people and fun people, and do you, um, what are some of the things that you, I mean, learn more about? Like when you interviewed her about the home front, what, what struck, what hit you differently that you weren't aware of? Um, I would say the, the, the depth of their struggle uh, with that with that particular interview, um, we actually have some similarities in certain type of struggles, you know, in our marriages and everything. But you know, it's it's one of the things I love about doing podcasting is you have the pleasure of finding out these different stories from the different guests to see how they came from the bottom to the top per se. 
And uh, it's always interesting to hear every one story. Everybody has a different lane. Yeah, I, you know, when you talk about that, and, and as we as we got to go through there and, and we celebrate um, each other, and as you talk to these people, it's kind of the human story, right? It, it's right. it's it's what you're throwing out there, um, especially with her and that. So we need to get that. So that's number 28. We want to make sure that we put that out there. That's number 28, right, of your podcast. Yes, so if we want yes, to hear sir. that hear that interview uh we we don't want to break the, all the news today i mean we don't want to we don't want to do the re-interview but we want people to get out there and and hear your interview so um what is uh what's your favorite part about having your own podcast now that you've dropped number 28 what's your favorite part mm, that's a very good question uh my favorite part is just having a platform to help people you know like i tell have told some you know, whether it's one person that hears this episode or a million or more, um, it's just giving them the opportunity to get their voice out there. And I've, I've compared it to, I don't know if you had this back when you was in school, but you remember show and tell? Absolutely. Remember that? Yes, sir. That's where I consider my um, podcast. Is I made an A. I made an A in show and tell. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a course you can't fail. That's for yeah, sure. you can't fail show and tell, right? You can't fail show and tell. And I like to do a lot of talking, so yeah. So okay, oh, okay. So okay, okay, so you got this, and and you got this um, this podcast, and you get this platform. What has surprised you the most when you do this? I mean, I know I know you obviously you you enjoy doing it. Obviously, you're you're doing well at it. What what has surprised you the most while doing it? Hmm. That's that's a very good question. Um, I would say I don't know if you are you referring to like dealing with guests or just the whole process. Everything. I mean, anything that it, 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 you know. I I'll tell you, as I've gotten to this, and and for me personally, um, mm -hmm. my personal um, idea and and belief in safety has grown tremendously and trying to get the word out. I, I think my passion has become centered and focused on safety. And yeah. it, it, in fact, it's hard to be around me when we have meetings or, or when we go out and we meet new people. Sometimes my wife will roll her eyes because I'll get, somebody will mention something about safety and boy, I'm on it. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you for me, whether it be BCB Live or it be anything else, my promise and, and seriousness and passion for safety has become very real to me. What What is it about your podcast that makes it different that you have found for yourself um, the, the, the purpose of it? What, what for you, really? Okay. Um, for me, it's something that really touches home uh, because I like focusing more so on small businesses and like I say, it touches home with me because I've had different businesses throughout the years going way back. And I know how strong the struggle is to try to get some type of um, publicity or get on some type of platform to let people know that I'm out there. And that's, you know, part of the reason that I created this podcast and the good Lord let me to create it is to give people a voice because as you know, um, you know, small businesses, that's definitely has been the backbone of America and that's um, the main pillar of its economy. So with that, I understand the struggle, I understand the discipline it takes, I understand the countless hours, uh, sleepless nights, etc. cetera, um, to try to get the wheels turning in motion to try to be successful being a small business owner. So in saying that, um, you know, I try to do my best in the knowledge that I have to help different small businesses when they come on the platform or uh, talk with them or whatever. You know, some of them I may have to coach in some areas that I do have knowledge about to help bring them up even more to be, you know, successful. And um, I enjoy that. I enjoy helping people. That That's always been to the core of my, my soul. Wow, and, and as you talk about these entrepreneurs that you highlight on your show and you, you get to know them and, and, 
and you've had a, a wide variety, right? You've had a, a wide variety of different types of entrepreneurs come on here, um, whether it be from recruiting to, uh, and here we are talking about an author within the industry. Um, what are what are some of the different um, entrepreneurs you've brought in? Um, one of them, I guess, like you said, um, recruit recruitment, um, people, drug and testing. Um, I have one that sticks out more to me um, than others, and that's due to um, his name is Mr. Larry Walker. He's the owner of the Scale and Matic Corporation. Uh, he has a product that's called a fuel saver. And I found that a very unique pro product. Um, and I can't remember if he reached out to me or either vice versa. But uh, he was telling me about that, and it's in the interview as well. And I just found it very amazing to learn about it because it's a product that helps with um, basically improve performance, you know, reducing, um, you know, soot, uh, reduce emissions, et cetera. And it also provides um, an increase of 10, somewhere between 10 to 20%, sometimes more in fuel cost savings. And then the better part of it, in my personal opinion, is that product actually pays for itself anywhere between two to six months. So I found that to be a very good thing instead of something that has to take years to pay off, it pays for itself in a very short period of time. So um, that's one guess uh, I've had texting, um, oh my goodness, uh, the young lady, Tasha Harrison Springs, uh, she's all about safety and against um, being awareness of um, being off the phone and texting and driving. She's against all that, which is good. Um, this, this different ones, Mr. Um, you know, the heavy duty parts report, Mr. Jamie Irvine uh, with, you know, he's, he's an excellent guy out of Canada. So this, I can go right down the list. I just no, and, and, I, and, as you, and as you talk about these entrepreneurs that you get to meet and interview and, and you get to get to associate with and learn a little bit about them, what are some mm -hmm. of the key factors that you have come to identify in those people that help create their own success? What are some of the things that when we see your podcast, we'll see as, their, as those key point, po points of that individual that makes them successful? In my opinion, I believe uh, for the majority of them is good mentorship. Good mentorship. Um, a lot of them have good mentors to help guide them along the path and ways. And then also being part of a close knit network as well um, has really helped a lot of them succeed and get through all the tough times and the growing pains. Those definitely are the two things I've seen. And um, hearing about, you know, making sure they have the finances and capital and, you know, the discipline that it takes to be successful in business, um, is, you know, really sticks out to me. Um, Derek, and, and as we talk about this, who, who are some of the people, um, that you may have coming on the show soon? Do you have anything out there that we, we may need to look for? You got any ideas? What kind of stuff you got planned for, uh, um, trucking entrepreneurs podcast? Yes, sir. Um, I do have one guest. He is absolutely hilarious. Uh, his name is Mr. Chris Harris. Uh, he's with Safety Dog Inc. Uh, he is a very funny man. He's all about safety. I mean, to the max. He reminds me a lot of um, your podcast. Uh, he's extremely serious about it. But on the flip side, he's very funny. Uh, he believes in having fun while you know, doing your work as well. And his podcast is coming out on the full interview on July the 12th. Oh, wow. And if you were to hear him, man, it's going to keep you, you know, rolling in between the serious parts. And matter of fact, I could imagine him being on you all show because of the knowledge that you all have in safety combined with his and then the comedy that you all will have together. Um, I would pay to see that episode if that would ever happen. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we'll do everything we can to get another com comedian on in, in here to talk a little bit about safety. We sure don't have enough of that going on in this in this building at any given uh -oh. moment. 
not. Uh -oh. um, but you know what? We're excited for the opportunity to talk to anyone about safety. Derek, you know, um, as we talk about this and, and as we talk about the entrepreneurs in this industry, um, what is it that you see right now as the, some of the hot topics going on? You've been talking to people in the trucking industry. What are some of the genuine hot topics out there? Like, like for us, obviously fuel, like I've found fuel being a hot topic and, and also limiters, you know, that's going, they're talking about putting limits, speed limiters on there. What are some of the hot topics that you've, you've come across? Um, the most I've, well, one of them would be parking. Um, it's the parking 100%. issue. And I didn't know it was that serious. Um, you know, I don't have the knowledge that you all have about the industry, but I didn't know it was as serious as it was um, until just getting bits and pieces of it off of uh, LinkedIn. And matter of fact, one of my uh, future guests I come, have coming on later down the road, um, he actually has an app that actually helps with the parking issue for uh, truckers and everything. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, interview, um, you know, when that takes place. And so, but that's, that's one issue that I find surprising is the parking issue. Yeah. I, and I agree with you hundred percent, Derek, we've talked about it on this show with many, many different uh, trucking associations and, and, and drivers and, and what have you. And, and yeah, I, this is not an easy solution. This isn't something that's going to be a quick fix. We're dealing with this. And, and you know what I found interesting as you brought it up? We, we uh, you know, Atri's top list um, has listed that truck parking is the number one issue among truck drivers. The oh, number wow. one issue among truck drivers out there, even before pay, even before home time, even mm -hmm. before all these other issues, Truck parking is their number one issue. And I think a, a recent study, as you discuss it, a recent study came out and said that one hour out of every their day is, is, while, is taking one hour of a driver's day on average on their mm -hmm. day is out trying to find a place to park. Wow. I mean, an hour. Can you imagine that an hour? I mean, I get it if you had to drive to work for an hour, but, but just finding a place that is mandated under the law that you have to have a place to rest. You can't, it takes an hour in some cases, some cases two, um, you know, in some cases three. Can you imagine looking for a parking space for three hours? No, sir, I can't imagine that and don't want to have to imagine that. <laughs> wow, that, that's, that's really a, a tremendous issue, I tell you. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you brought it up. I hope you keep digging in and keep talking to people about parking. We've got to make sure we get the word out uh, in the industry as a whole. Um, I will tell you, Derek, um, Drug testing has become a big topic. Um, do you, you uh, um, do you have any information that you can help us with on this topic? Did you have you talked to anybody about that lately? Uh, I had a guest on not too long ago by the name of um, Brenda Brenda Mrs. Brenda Calvert. Uh, she's the manager at Boss Tech Inc. They're out of the state of Washington. Um, she's a very 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 nice lady, and one of the things she had discussed with me that. I wasn't really fully aware of, and I know you all probably are, um, is that a truck driver, driver is required to get tested, you know, randomly uh, throughout the year. And also that they have 32 hours to do a drug test and eight hours to do a breath alcohol test if they get involved in an accident. And also, if a truck driver gets a, a positive test, they uh, are immediately requested to stop driving and do some type of non-driving, um, you know, work, whether it's working in a warehouse or, you know, office or something of that nature. And then the process of going through counseling and doing a negative return uh, to duty tests and, you know, so forth. You know, I found that very interesting to uh, know and she shared a lot of great information uh, during that interview. Yeah, that sounds like a great podcast. We'll be sure to uh, open that up and watch that interview. Um, it sounds like she's got um, a lot of knowledge on what's got to go on uh, in the industry dealing testing. I'll tell you, it's it's something that to me and, and I, I hope you agree, it's something that needs to be done. We don't want yeah. airplane. Yeah, we don't want airplane pilots out there, you know, doing drugs and flying planes and, and drinking. And we sure don't want our truck drivers out there doing the same thing. Right. I mean, it's too dangerous right. Too it's too unsafe. It needs to be done. 
and I, I believe in the random policy as it stands. I, I do think it, it is a big, it is something that needs to be done. I, I um, as we go forward, I'll tell you what, um, it's exciting that you're touching on the businesses, right, in the industry and, and the, the up and coming businesses. You like yes, yourself sir. in an up and coming business in, in uh, podcasting and, and hi- highlighting and, and doing that. The, the people that come up and do that, do you ever get a surprise call? Do people ever, do you ever hear somebody from somebody out of the blue that, that wants to come in and needs a, and wants to talk on your forum? Do you ever get those? Yes, sir. Actually, I do. Um, you know, that does happen on occasion. Uh, you know, thankfully, it's not always me reaching out. <laughs> thankfully, it's, it's some people that do have an interest and they reach out to me. And it uh, seems like it always happened at times that, you know, it's just like surprising times. You know, I'm not expecting it, of course, or what have you. And, you know, it's a good feeling. It's a very good feeling to know that somebody out there is watching or listening and they have an interest to be um, on the Trucking Entrepreneurs podcast. Um, it's a very good feeling to me, and I'm very thankful and grateful for it. Well, I tell you, I tell you what, I hope, I hope that you get flooded with calls, and I hope that more and more people want to be on your podcast and be highlighted. And that you have an opportunity to interview them and test them. And as always, Derek, it's a great pleasure for you to come on here, visit with us, and let us know kind of what's going on with you and what happens. I'll tell you what, we look forward to having you on again soon. I am going to ask you that before you leave, uh, make sure you state who you are and your name and who you're with, and that you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Can you do that for me? Yes, sir. My name is Derek Williams uh, with the Trucking Entrepreneurs Podcast. And- with on BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. That's right. All right, man, Derek. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> yes, Good sir. Stuff, Thank man. you. Thank hey, you. Hey, man. Thanks me. for jumping on. We do appreciate you as always. Yes, sir. Thank you. Likewise. All right. Thank you very much.